So here as we first come into the inside of our HQ15, we see all this beautiful woodwork area. And this is actually wood veneer. This is a grain veneer. This is not uh, paper, it's not wallpaper, it's not stickers. It's actual wood veneer on top of a Malaysian wood, a very sturdy wood, so that way you have that nice durable cabinet. And again, not you know, plastic, not paper, not stickers really high beautiful high gloss all that kind of great stuff and as we look down as we come down a little bit right here by the door i'm going to start off by the door for you here we have our plug so we have a gfci plug right here by the door because it's close to the sink and everything as well as by the door where rainwater can come in we have our switch this is for our silicone heat pads so underneath the water tanks the two water tanks we have a silicone heat pad to help keep your water from thawing, or excuse me, not thawing, from freezing in those cold temperatures. Now, this system is a 110 or 120 system. You do need to be plugged into a shoreline or a generator, so that way this system will work. And then as we come down, we have a switch for the light. So there is an entry light that is underneath the step. Um, unfortunately, I can't get it to turn on right now because the door is closed. So here I'm gonna just kind of very quickly, if I can get it open, I don't know if you can really see it, probably not so much, um, but a light does come on and it does shut off. So when you do leave, you can turn on your light switch and then you don't have to worry about that light draining your battery because as you walk away, the light is shut off when you close the door. But make sure that your unit does that because some of the earlier models did not do that. And then the next switch right here, this is our rubber switch to run our electric steps in and out. So here at the very front of the unit, so as soon as you come in the door, right off to the side, you have a nice big queen size bed. So it's a nice, great big area. We have a nice uh, diamond pattern on the headboard up there. So that way, you know, when you're climbing into bed, so rather than just making it just, again, a, a sticker that looks like wood, it's actual a nice headboard. And that's one of the really nice features that I love about it. And that's like a nice, um, like a not a pleather um, but it's a marine grade uh, leather faux leather so that way it's protected and it's durable material now as we look over here to the sides of the beds we do have a little counter space now the counter space is a little bit longer um, there is a drawer here I'm gonna point out ah, if I can get over here there's a pull-out drawer right here but I just want to point out so that way you can see you cannot walk all the way down the side of the bed. You don't have a limited amount of space you can walk down. So you have a little bit of area you can walk down. Um, in other traditional trailers, there is space underneath the bed where you can raise it up and store stuff. The thing about the storage underneath our beds is we have stuff stored in there. It's your kitchen. So your kitchen is actually underneath this unit as well as your underneath storage. So you're not gonna have this area to use for storage. There is an area just up front at the foot of the bed, and I'll show you that in a little bit, where you can maybe store some shoes, some boots, and you know, some other little items, but you're not gonna have that under bed storage because again, that's where your kitchen is stored and that is where your pass-through storage is at. Now, as we do come up, we do have some cabinets. We got a, I got an overhead cabinet here, um, a hand slip. Overhead cabinet here, small space. We have a nice, deep, deep closet. I mean, it goes back quite a bit, but even more importantly, it goes down too. So it's a really nice deep cabinet that's right here, as well as our overhead storage right here. We have some overhead storage space as well. Now, one, some of the nice features they also have is our reading lights. Each side of the bed has their own touch reading lights, which is one of the really nice features of our units. As we look up, we have our puck lights. So that way they light up through our whole area and they're divided. So these are connected by one switch. So when you flip a switch and you turn these lights off, um, there's another switch for the other puck lights as well as the LED strip lights. There's two speakers inside here. We have one speaker located here and we have one speaker located towards the back. And then we also have our overhead, um, our overhead awning, our overhead cover that we can open up. Now this ha does have, you don't really have to worry about sunlight coming through because there is a privacy shade so that way we can darken that out. Or if you want to open this and just have wind blowing through, you can also pull across the screen if you have bugs involved. Now, if not, then what you can do is you can open this up 
push this open, it opens up nice and tall. It's a much larger cover than most. And so that way you get a lot of airflow through here. If you have a lot of hot air built up in here, maybe you didn't have the air conditioning running when you were gone, you open up uh, any one of the large windows you can find in our units, open this up and the airflow just blows right through here. You can also have an adjustment to make this lower. So there's actually a couple clips that you would put it, bring it down onto, bring the clip across, and you can also hold it at a slight angle so you can allow airflow without having it fully open. So one of the really bright ideas of this right here is our lights. I love the lights in this thing. It really helps light up the room. Now obviously it's daytime, the sun's out, so you can't really tell the difference, but this really helps to light up the room when it comes to turning it on and off. Now, as we come over here on the ceiling part, we also have the controller for our antenna. So we have a digital antenna up on the roof. And now right now it's not on, we have our King Jack antenna. And so you actually have to go into this compartment here and there is a switch, the King Jack switch. So this goes to the TV. So when you turn it on, you have the power on. Now the antenna is now turned on. So now there's power going to the antenna. Now to move the antenna, you wanna get all blue lights. The red means there's no signal. The blue gives you the strength of your signal. Now we are in a very strong signal area. So no matter which way I turn it, you're gonna have an air, a, a strong signal. Now, if I just turn it, it makes this really loud, obnoxious noise. So there's actually a button right here you wanna squeeze. And then when you do that, the whole antenna will turn. So you can adjust and control the direction in which the antenna is facing and get you a much stronger signal, or at least until all of your lights, or as many of your blue lights will light up as you can get. So as we come down from our antenna, we see our TV. Now this is a DVD TV, so you can put in your DVDs, you can bring them with you if you want. It's got a swivel, you can swivel it out of the way, do what we need to with it. I'm just gonna push it out of the way over there a little bit so we can see some of these switches. Up in here, we have our thermostat. This thermostat is for our 16,000 BTU heater, which is located at the base of the bed. We'll show you that in just a little bit. But we have three sets of switches. Now this is our main switch. If I turn this off, it turns everything off. Turn everything back on. These three switches, single switches right here, control the inside lights. And then these switches right here, these are rocker switches. Now I can turn them on and off, but you're not gonna see anything because these control the floodlights outside. So like for instance, that would be the front one, that would be the rear one, this would be the right side, that would be the left side. Now that's not necessarily the order, but that's generally how it is set up, that's how it works. Now, at several locations throughout the, throughout the trailer, and I'm gonna turn this off real quick, you will see our reading lights. Now, nothing is on right now if I touch the button, and it's just a touch button. It turns on this little blue ambient circle, blue ring of light. If I touch it again, it turns on our light, okay? Now, if I touch and hold it, it will actually dim the light. So by holding it, it's a dimmer switch as well. And see, it's also getting brighter there. So if to turn it off, you just touch the button again, and it turns off. But by holding the button, that gives you a dimmer switch. Now, just below that, you see this plug. Now it's not a GFCI plug, this says inverter. So this, what this tells me is that this plug will work off of the inverter. So in order to watch your TV, in order to run your microwave or maybe a coffee pot, you would plug into one of these plugs that say inverter, and then you would turn on your inverter so that way you can use that appliance. Now again, don't use them long, long, long term. You don't wanna leave it running like all night long. You don't need to run it. Um, but use it when you need to, and then turn it off when you're done using it. So uh, again, talking about the inverter switch, like I said, we'll, we'll get into the inverter in just a second here. But as we come down, we also have another plug. We also have a 12 volt plug with a dual USB plug. So there's two USB ports right here so you can plug in your appliances. But as we come down, now I've already removed the pad from the bench, but underneath, this bench is our inverter. This is our 2000 watt inverter by Ames Power. So you can see some of the other areas. So this is where our shower, that's our outdoor shower. The blue and the red are obviously hot and cold water. Here we see our, uh, our, 
our filling tubes. So when you're filling up our water, um, that's where gonna be our fill tubes right there. But this is the inverter. Now you can see, hopefully I think, there's a switch right here on top of the inverter. And the inverter right now is in the off position. And that's where it should always be. It should always be in the off position. You should never use the other switches. And here is the why. The reason why is the AIM system utilizes a satellite switch. So the satellite switch is actually located over here and it says AIM's power on it. And it's got a couple lights on it. Now, the switch, it's a three position switch, just like on top of the inverter. Inverter off, so right now it is off. You have inverter on, and then you have power saver auto. Do not, do not, do not set it on power saver auto. What it does is it sends signals constantly in a pulsation, and so that way you're actually draining your battery. People see the word saver and think, oh, it's saving the battery. No, it's actually draining your battery. So never put it on that. You should only put it on on or off. So if I wanna use my microwave, if I wanna use my TV, maybe I'm gonna run my coffee pot, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna turn that on, all right? The microwave will kick on. There we go, the microwave is kicked on. And then a yellow light comes on. Now most times people see green, yellow, and red, and red is bad, which in this case it is, it says alarm. Yellow is, uh-oh, something's wrong with it. And actually, if you look, it just says inverter on, okay? So that's saying that the battery is the priority. That's all this means, that you're working off your battery. It's nothing bad. And then the green light says battery charger. Now, in our units, in the HQ15s, the inverter, when you plug into your 30 amp plug, your shore power, the inverter now becomes a converter and it utilizes itself as a battery charger. So in order to charge your batteries, it's not like standard units where you plug it in and everything charges and you're good to go. You need to turn this to the on position, which turns the inverter into a converter or a battery charger and it charges your batteries. So sometimes people think, oh, as soon as I come into camp, I need to turn things on. No, you don't need to do that because you're gonna be draining your battery. The only time you turn this on is when you're gonna use it and then turn it off or when you're gonna charge your battery then you can turn it on, or when you're gonna be working off your 30 amp, okay? So again, it's not like, oh, let's just turn it on automatically. There are certain reasons. We also have a video on use of this system in our video library, so be sure to check out our video library. Now, with all this talk of inverters and powers and batteries and stuff like that, let's talk about batteries. But before we do that, I wanna take the time to point out our radio. We do have a radio, this is a Kenwood radio. And it's also, I believe, uh, USB and Bluetooth uh, capabilities. Um, but it also is gonna be feeding into those two speakers. Here's that one speaker and the other speaker is up at the front. So again, inverters, powers, let's go over to the other side. Now, the uh, batteries are located under the bench on this side, and I've already taken the pad out and lifted up the door. Now, if you can see there, you can count. One, two, three, and four. There are four. AGM 100 amp hour batteries in the HQ15. So what does that mean for you? That means 400 amp hours of power. So there's a lot of breakers in here. So here's our control panel, our towing device, our solar control, and our inverter. So we have all our breakers in here. We have a full battery cutoff, so that will cut off. Maybe you can hear the fan running. There's a vent fan in here to help vent everything. And then we have our charger controller right here mounted on this side as well. So our HQ15, our HQ17, our HQ19, and our HQ21 models um, are coming with four batteries in them, four AGM batteries with 100 amp hours a piece. So as I'm standing here in the center of the unit, you can see just above my head, we have the air conditioner unit. It is a little tight on me, I'm about 6'1". And so the ceiling height in this, in our units, is six foot three inches. So if you're six three and up, it might be a little tight on you. This is, you're definitely gonna hit your head here. But we have our air conditioning unit. We have a couple different vents out all the different sides and different areas. So we can send the air in different directions. We have a fan setting, we have a cool setting, and then we have a heat setting because this does work as a heat pump as well. 
So what happens with a heat pump? Well, obviously we know how an air conditioner works. You turn on the button, cold air blows out, and if you've ever been on the outside, hot air is coming out that way. With a heat pump, it reverses direction and blows the heat into the unit and blows the cold air out of the unit. So the heat pump will work more kind of like on chilly, cold mornings. Um, but you do, again, have to be plugged in. This is not gonna be working off of your batteries. Even though you got four batteries, 2000 watt inverter, you have to be plugged into either a shoreline or a generator powerful enough to run your AC unit. So with the heat pump, like I said, chilly mornings, cold mornings, you can help cool off or excuse me, warm up the unit. Um, while you're in here with your settings. Now, if you want, a, if you're in a really cold area, you need to use your propane heater. And again, that's gonna be under your bed. And we'll show you that in just a few minutes here. So that way you have a nice warm heated unit. So here on this side, this is the entry side of the unit. We have, we have a window and the window's latched. I'm gonna keep that down for our lighting. But we also have a cabinet up here. So we got a nice little storage cabinet up here. And here we have a plug that says inverter. So that's gonna be running our microwave here. So you have your storage cabinet with our, you can see our LED strip lighting, which is a nice little lighting. Our microwave, okay, that again works off of an inverter. As we come down here, we have our sink. We have our, our three burner stove. So we have our three burner stove here. Now you need to make sure that you are utilizing your vent fan. Now there is lighting. There's a vent fan with lighting here. That one's already on. So that way, if you're cooking inside, you turn on your vent fan. So that way you're venting all those things out. Actually, I'll leave that light on. And then over here, there's actually a touch light. Okay. So you just touch it in the center. The light comes on. And then you have your faucet. Now, the top part of the faucet, this is coming off of your general water tank. Now I'm going to swing this around so you can see. And this little flip valve right here, this little flip valve, that's going to be for your drinking water tank. So let me push this over here, actually. When you flip that down, that would engage the secondary pump and that would get you your drinking water out of the same faucet. So there's two spigots here. So water would come, general wood water would come out of one, your drinking water would come out of the other line, okay? So, and then this sink drains into your gray tank. So you have to worry about disposing of gray water from a bucket or anything. And as we come down, we have our pull-out drawer for our utensils and everything. And it's got a soft close. So it grabs it, and pulls it closed. We have a refrigerator. We got a small refrigerator here. You can put all of your essentials in there. Um, you know, maybe your meats or, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, or whatever you want to take with you. We've got a small little fridge freezer here. And then we have our cabinetry. Now I'm going to switch positions. I'm going to come over this way here. And we're going to open up our cabinets. So we have our storage underneath our cabinets. Now, as you can see over here, you see the triple filtration system. You see the water would come up go through the triple filters and come up to our faucet, um, as well as our gas line, so that way you can shut off our gas here, and then all of our, our piping for our sink. Now, underneath here, at the bottom, at the base, you can see that silver knob. Now, that silver knob is a heat controller for your hot water, so that way you don't have the setting too terribly high where someone would burn themselves. It's a heat regulator, just like you would find on your uh, hot water heater in your homes. We have them in our units here. And then we have a couple of covers right there. Say black series on them because there's sensitive equipment in there. There's electronics in there. There's water pumps in there. Um, there's wiring. And so we don't want you to use that area and possibly cause damage to your water pumps or your wiring, stuff like that. So that's just a way of protecting the essential items that are within the unit. So on the passenger side, well, actually technically it would be the driver's side, the non-entry side of our HQ15, we have some more cabinetry. Now, again, I want to point out, as always, we have our locking cabinets or handles here. So there's a button here, you have to push it. But again, these are essential for when you want to go down the road or when you're going down those bumpy roads. So that way these don't pop open and you toss all of your plates, your dishes, your everything out on the floor, which is a nice feature. So here in one of our cabinets, we just have some extra stuff or box for the radio and some other little things in here. Um, here we also have another nice storage cabinet. So we have really nice storage cabinetry in, in our areas. Let me close these up here. And then we also have our control panel. So we have our breakers, but we don't use fuses with Black Series units. We have our breakers, we have our water readouts. So we have you know, our drinking water, our general water, our gray tank, and our black water tanks. We have our hot water heater switch. 
So you can work off of either electricity, you can kind of see that lightning bolt there, or it works off of propane. So your, if you're plugged into your 30 amp, you can run your hot water. And then we also have our electronic meter. So it tells us how much voltage we have left, how much power is being used, how much current's coming in, how much energy, all that kind of fun stuff. So those are all the things that we have in, the, uh, in our, our control panel area. It's a really nice control panel. I love the look of it. It's a really great panel. Okay. So as we come down, so from our control panel, we're going to come down and we have our table. Now we've already kind of shown our battery conversion stuff. I put our pads back in. So to convert this into a bed, now one thing you might notice is the table is bolted to the floor. So that way, again, it's not flopping out of the way. They don't just have strap. We don't just have straps bolted to the wall where it still flops all over the place. This is bolted to the floor with a nut. So you can actually take this out if you wish, but it's bolted to the floor. Now, if you want to convert this, this converts to a dinette bed. And so for the dinette bed, you have the handle right here. So sometimes it sticks, so you kind of lift up a little bit. So you release it, this comes down and swings down into place, locks in place. And then you take two different pads. We have extra pads and the pads would fit across here and this creates a bed. Now it's not a very big bed, it's about uh, four foot, eight inches long or so. Um, it's about two and a half foot wide or so. So it is a bed though, so for someone who, maybe a small child, something like that. So as promised, here is the furnace and the storage compartment underneath the front bed, the queen bed. So as you look down, there is, again, a compartment door here, you open that up, and it's a decent sized compartment door or excuse me, compartment. And so you can fit like some shoes and boots and stuff like that in there. And then right next to it is the vent cover for our heater. That is the cover for the 16,000 BTU heater that's gonna fill this area with nice warm air. And this unit, the 16,000 BTUs, is actually designed for about 900 square feet or about the size of a good size of general master bedroom but you're filling it into this area here. So you're gonna be nice and warm. A lot of people that I've been hearing from, they are been, I've been reading about, that who've been using it, they've been complaining that it's too hot and they've had to turn it down and use it very little because of the R factor, the insulation, the insulating factors within our units and how well this unit works within these units. So one of the other really nice features of our units, the HQ models, is our leg rests. So in many standard units that you find, they have a pull-out drawer as storage. Well, we're obviously using the underside of our benches for our batteries and our inverters. So what we did with the end of this is we included a leg rest. So this will lock in place. So you have a couple of clamps here. Now again, this is not a seat. This is not meant to support you as a seat. So if you're sitting sideways, laying up against a wall, you would set your legs off. So rather than have your legs dangling off, you can rest your legs here. And then all you do is release the clamps when you're done and put it back in place. So here in the back of the HQ-15, we have a dry bath. We have a separate shower and toilet. And one of the nice features is this privacy door. Now the privacy door, when you're going down the road, does have a lock to it. So you do wanna make sure it's locked and latched in place when you are going down the road. Otherwise this can get the door off kilter, cause some issues, and we don't wanna do that. You have a nice little towel rack right here, but to function, make this door function, you undo the latch, and then you just very simply, this works off rollers, it closes over. So then, as part of the rest of the bathroom, we have a nice porcelain sink, and this actual porcelain with our faucet. And again, this faucet's gonna be working off of your general water. Along the sink, we also have the travel into our shower, and this is a really nice large shower with an adjustable shower head that slides up and down on it, our hot and cold water connector, so that way you know you have hot showers. And then in the top, you have a vent fan with actual extra lighting. Now there is already a light in there, but this just is nice to have some little extra lighting if you just want to use that instead of the other puck light that is in its place. And then you have that vent as well. Now, as you turn around and look the other way, like I said, you do have your toilet there. 
It is a, a wet toilet. It's not a cassette toilet. And you can see the cabinetry and all of the storage that you have along with that unit. So it's a really nice bathroom space. You have a lot of room you can move around. And again, it's nice to have that little privacy area. Now, one last thing I would like to mention is the shower door. We do have a newer style shower door on our units. And we're gonna show the function here and watch it close. So it's more of like an accordion style door, realistically, in that how it folds and functions. And so it seals completely from top to bottom with a magnet, so that way it helps keep the water in the shower. And the track for this unit is also still within the shower. So even if water builds up in the track, it will stay in the shower and not drip onto your floor. So the windows for our HQ models utilize a latch system. So to open it, now the old style ones had a push button right there that broke quite often because people forgot to push the button. So we actually took the button out. So you just push it now, push and push, this one was open. And so now if you listen at ratchets and so it'll hold in different positions. So it's not just kind of flopped open. You can hold it out in different positions. And to close the window, you push it open all the way and bring it down. Now, if you look at the clip right here, it's got two little prongs to it. So if you close it, you still wanna allow a little bit of airflow through the window. You bring it in halfway and go into the middle one. And you can still, as you can see, I can get my finger down in there. So it still allows a little bit of airflow. But when you wanna close it tight, you bring it in all the way and latch it, and latch it, and latch it, and there you have your fully locked window, no airflow getting through. So there you have it, everybody, the interior of the HQ15, a 2020 HQ15. Again, hopefully we're able to get all of your questions answered. Hopefully you're able to see everything that you wanted to see. Again, if you want to see something else, send us an email at info at blackseriescamper.com. We'll get you an answer out to you. Again, this is Jim Buck from inside this beautiful 2020 HQ15 saying, take care, everybody, and we'll see you out there. How you doing, everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Bach with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.